we must go now. Papa! Tiago, go with your mother to the trap. Take this. It will always be your guide. Yes, Papa. We will join you shortly. Xavier, the painting! Paris in the spring, passion, romance, l'amour. I was working in art insurance. It paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, George. We should catch up. Let's have lunch. Nobody move! La malédiction. Stay back. Once again, Paris had shown me her dark side. A brutal robbery, a senseless murder. Nico and I were about to be drawn into a new and terrifying adventure together. The gallery owner was dead. I guess sometimes playing the hero doesn't pay. My company had insured the exhibition, so I had a crime to solve. The cops would be here soon. I didn't have much time. The priest was giving last rites to the gallery owner. I didn't want to interfere. Henri's fashion sense was criminal, but he didn't deserve to die. The bus was balanced precariously on the pedestal. I didn't want to knock it off. The stolen painting was called La Maledexio, painted by someone called El Serp in 1937 and worth just 40 grand. The stolen painting was called La Maledexio. This was where the stolen painting had hung. Why that painting? And why kill for it? The stolen painting had an alarm, which should have sounded when the painting was removed. I needed to find out why it hadn't. So, the alarm wasn't broken. I suspected foul play. I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. So that was why the alarm hadn't sounded. A wire had been cut by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. This was an inside job. The pressure pad appeared, but the cut wire had ensured that the alarm The door was locked with a keypad. The wires from the camera ran into the room behind. It must have captured the whole robbery. If I could get the code to the keypad, I might be able to shed some light on the crime. The cable for the camera ran into the room marked private.
It was Hector Lane, France's greatest art critic. We'd met before. It hadn't ended well. For a moment, I thought he was dead. But from the snoring, I guessed he'd only fainted. Lane was out cold. I was going to need something to bring him around. The thief left the pizza box behind. I wondered what was in it. Well, no surprise there. Pizza. The guy must have been hungry. There was only one slice left. No one had noticed the pizza box fall onto the floor. I decided to leave it alone. I decided against stuffing cold pizza into an unconscious man's mouth. I needed him live. The alarm on that painting hadn't been sabotaged. So what made La Maledizio so special? The priest was giving... Excuse me, Father. my son. I'm George Stobart. My company insured the exhibition. My name is Simeon. Is there anything I can do? You can pray for his soul. A senseless murder. On the contrary, this killing makes plenty of sense. What do you mean? A great evil has taken place. This is the work of the devil. What? I am a Dominican priest. I know these things. And now, excuse me, I must pray. One minute I'd been planning dinner with Nico, the next I was talking art theft, murder, and the devil with a priest. In Henri's pocket was a tiny bottle. It was a bottle of Brett. The label claimed it would wake the beast within. There was a small piece of paper in the dead man's hand. It was too intriguing not to take a look. It read, 2.30 p.m., be ready. Innocent enough, until I realized that the robbery took place at 2.30 p.m. There was something fishy going on around here, and it wasn't just the canapes. I quickly replaced the note. Poor guy. He definitely looked better. I didn't want Henri's blood on my hands. A cryptic note in a bottle of overpowering cologne. No personal effects or anything else of substance. I definitely needed to check out that office. The label read, Awaken the Beast Within. Well, no harm in trying. What was that? It smells like... like the 70s. Where am I? You fainted.
The nail clippers were monogrammed with the letters H.L. Hector Lane. They must have fallen out of his pocket. Welcome back to the land of the living. I wouldn't exactly call this living. Don't just stand there. Get me something to eat. I've had a terrible shock, you know. I found a slice of pizza. I asked for food, boy, not a cardboard simulacrum. Oh, okay, if you don't want it. I didn't say that. Now give it here. Given the circumstances, that was surprisingly acceptable. Uh, now what's been going on? I... Oh, Henri, is he dead? Prayed so. Poor chap. Just like him to steal the limelight, though. Excuse me. Do I know you? Yes, our paths have crossed in the Glees Gallery. Of course, the man with the absinthe. I don't suppose you... Uh, afraid not. Pity. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble remembering your name. I'm George Stobart. I insured the exhibition. <laughs> I hope you have deep pockets then, my boy. Could I ask you a few questions, Mr. Lane? Fire away. Did you know the gallery owner? Of course. We worked together on the exhibition. Oh, really? Henri provided the space. I was the creative powerhouse. How long had you known him? As a friend, many years. Our professional relationship had only recently blossomed into this exhibition, under my curatorial wing. And now the poor fellow has gone and got himself killed. If Lane was involved with the gallery, then he had to know the code to that door. Do you know anything about the stolen painting? Of course, dear boy. La Maledicio, a little-known work, turned up at the last minute. What about the killer? Were you able to get a look at him? A delinquent in a tin hat. Beyond that, I don't really recall. Oh, yeah, you fainted. Those of us with a higher aesthetic are more sensitive to violence. So you curated the exhibition? What's it about? A brilliant retrospective. A dialectical window on European art's ongoing discourse with the unresolved psychoses of the nation-state. Wow, you took the words right out of my mouth. Who painted the stolen painting? Therein lies a mystery. We only know his pseudonym, El Serp. He was a Catalan, a modernist. His works are symbolic, religious. What can you tell me about the stolen painting? La Maledicio, a challenging piece. If you like a wide cast of obscure saints and fringe Christian symbolism, of course. Not especially valuable, though. The thief won't get much for it on the black market. So, you help run this place? Maybe you can give me the code to that door. The code to the office? I just thought you might have the number. I do, but I couldn't possibly give you access before the police arrive. I figured I wasn't going to get the door code from Lane by playing nice. I needed to turn the heat up. Mr. Lane, you're really going to have to give me the code to that door. And why, pray, should I do that? Because the way the cops will see it, you're the prime suspect. We both know you're innocent, Mr. Lane, but the cops, well, they may not see things so simply. I might be able to get them off your case, but in exchange, I'd like the code for the office door. But that's preposterous. The police would have neither evidence nor motive. Funny you should mention that. Someone sabotaged the alarm on the stolen painting. A wire was cut. What? Who could have got into the alarm system? Exactly. It was an inside job, Mr. Lane. 
You're not suggesting that I... Well, I'm afraid that's the way the cops are going to see it. That's preposterous. How could I possibly have cut the wire? Are these your nail clippers, Mr. Lane? Yes, they have my initials monogrammed on them. Huh. The perfect implement for cutting the alarm on the stolen painting. What are you saying? Well, the alarm was sabotaged, Mr. Lane. It was an inside job. Are you accusing me? How dare you? I had no reason to kill Henri. No motive whatsoever. Okay, but I don't think the cops will see it like that. And I sure would like that door code. This is an inside job for sure, Mr. Lane. The police are going to be very interested in your recent movements. I've been out of town for several days, and last night I retired early. Just saying. You're not going to scare me into giving you that door code, you know. I was onto something here, and I knew it. Lane was sweating. It wasn't pretty. How about it, Mr. Lane? Ready to give me the door code yet? Certainly not. Give me a single reason why I should. Guilty by way of nail clippers. I've been away from Paris for several days and only got back this morning. How could I have cut that wire? I hate to say this, Mr. Lane, but you're going to be the number one suspect for this murder. So you keep saying, Mr. Stobart. Mr. Lane, this robbery is not going to reflect well on you. As I said, I shall take my chances. You're not getting that door code. How about some more of this? I don't think so. As a cell volatile, it was acceptable. As a cologne, it would be barbaric. Guilty by way of nail clippers. Sheer fantasy. What possible motivation could I have to sabotage the alarm? So you'd been out of town and hit the sack early last night? That's right. I've not been near the gallery for days. Father? Yes, my son. What did you mean when you said that a great evil had taken place? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. What? Peter 5.8 the devil is all around, Mr. Stobart. Did Henri say anything before he died? He said, Stop the car. I want to get in. Um, what does that mean? We may never know. What brought you to the exhibition, Father? The painting. Which one? La Maledictio, of course. The painting that was stolen. I had to confront the evil. I think there's something strange going on here. Yes, Mr. Stobart. At last you see the truth. No, Father. I mean that the robbery looks like an inside job. The devil's work is always an inside job. A wire in the painting's alarm was deliberately cut. Cut by the devil himself, perhaps. Well, as far as I know, sightings of guys with horns and tails have been a little down recently. You mock me, Mr. Stobart. But as you will discover, the devil likes to have the last laugh. Do you know the code to get into the office? No, but you could always pray and ask for divine guidance. With respect, Father, I'm looking for a slightly quicker solution. What do you know about the man who painted La Maledictio? El Serp. He was a man playing with fire. 
the fire of eternal damnation. Tell me about the stolen painting. Whoever gets close to it will burn in hell. Hey, Father, how about a squirt? I think not. Do you recognize these? Nail clippers? I'm not sure what your point is. I decided to... Nico wasn't answering. Hello, Mr. Rickenbacker? Stobart, what do you want? Mr. Rickenbacker, there's been a problem. Oh, why does that surprise me? This better not involve the blue lizard. I'm afraid it does, sir. There's been a robbery. Oh, terrific. Only one painting was stolen, though. Well, what are you wasting time talking to me for? Find that painting, or find a way to avoid paying out. Two ways to keep your job, Stobart. I see. Uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anything else you got to tell me? The thief had a gun. He shot the gallery owner dead. We insured him, too? No, sir. Well, that's one piece of good news. At least tell me you got some leads. I'm pretty sure the security was sabotaged. The alarm was disabled for that one painting. So, it was an inside job. Who else is at the gallery? There's a guy called Hector Lane. Lane? Why does that name sound familiar? He's an art critic. I think he's connected to the exhibition. Well, could it be him? Well, he's rude and ugly. It's certainly possible. So squeeze him, Stobart. Squeeze him till he squeals. If I was going to squeeze Lane, I needed longer arms than these. Find out who disabled the security system, then find that painting. And don't call back until you have. Certainly not. Guilty by... I've been away from Paris for... So, you'd been out... That's right. The poster looked old. Another painting. The clippers were the perfect size to cut the wire. Could Lane be the saboteur? I had to find out. It was the speaker cone for the... I still needed the... Hair today, gone tomorrow. I put the glasses back where they were. Best to leave the evidence the way I found it. I decided to let Henri's toupee rest in peace.
I didn't need to look at the note a second time. It was poor game. The street was quiet and upmarket. Not the kind of place for an opportunist thief. The room looked like some sort of office for the gallery. I could just see the glow of the CCTV monitor in the corner. You gotta hand it to the French. They know how to take a leak in style. Excuse me. There's just been a robbery at the gallery. Oh, man. You don't sound surprised. All property is theft, monsieur. And all art is property. Therefore, all art is theft. Do you not agree? Uh, well, uh, when you put it like that, it's <clears throat> hard not to. Did you see anybody run out of the gallery earlier? There was a beautiful woman with a camera. She was chasing somebody. Well, that must have been Nico. You know her. You surprised me. Can you tell me anything about the man she was chasing? I assume, monsieur, that like all of us, he is inherently unknowable. No wonder this guy's cafe was empty. The gallery owner, Henri, was shot dead trying to stop the robbery. Life has no meaning the moment you lose the illusion of being eternal. Right. Did you know him well? Can we ever truly know another human being, monsieur? He spent little time at the cafe, unlike his friend, monsieur Lane. What do you know about Hector Lane? Lane? Oh, yes. He drinks here sometimes. He slid away last night without paying. Last night? What sort of time? After midnight, for sure. If you see him, give him this bill. And tell him to pay up next time. The check was from last night. But Lane told me he was nowhere near the gallery. This could be the leverage I needed to get the office door code from Lane. Thank you for your... Take a look at this. Walt Albert. It's your bill from the cafe next door. So? It's dated yesterday. Last night, in fact. 12.30 to be exact. You said you were out of town. You sure drank a lot of champagne last night without paying the bill. But you told me that you were away from Paris last night. I hate to say it, but that sounds like a lie to me. Tell you what, you give me the code of the door, and the police need never know. A motive and proof of involvement. Not looking good, Mr. Lane. You are a blackmailer, Stobart. Just doing my job. <sighs> All right. You have me. The number is 6397. But I admit to none of these spurious accusations. I had the code. The police would be here any moment, so I had to work fast. Oh, 
What was that number again? Six, four. Everyone, hold it right there. Damn it. I am Inspector Navet of the Paris Serious Crime Squad, and I hereby declare this crime scene open. I mean, closed. Now, nobody move, especially you on the floor. Mo, I want a total lockdown. Nobody in or out. Apart from me, of course. I needed to get back into the gallery, but a familiar figure was guarding the door. It was Sergeant Mu. Our paths had crossed before. Sergeant Mu, we meet again. Aha, Madame Collard. An unexpected pleasure. I was in the gallery at the time of the theft. Can I get back in? I am sorry, but I am under strict orders from Inspector Navet. Uh, nobody in, uh, nobody out. And I must correct you, Madame. It is no longer just a theft. It is a murder. Mon Dieu! That poor man! Who is Inspector Nave? Ah, the most promising young investigator on the force. A genius! A man blessed with almost superhuman insight. He sounds highly perspicacious. Madame, it is not for us to talk about the Inspector's sweaty proclivities. He is about to solve his third case in as many days. So, what's he got that the other investigators don't have? Blood spatter. He is the world expert. He reads the entrails of the crime scene like a book. I witnessed the crime. I've got to get back in there. I'm sure you can make an official statement in good time. I saw the thief. I think I can help the investigation. I am implacable, Madame Cola. I chased after the shooter and got a photo of him. Inspector Nave will be delighted. You've got to let me into the gallery to show him. Absolutely not. So I cannot go in without Inspector Nave's permission? No. And to get Inspector Nave's permission, I need to go in. Exactement. Have you ever heard of Kafka, Sergeant Mu? Madame Gola, I do not see what soccer players have to do with this. No, he's a... Never mind. Here's my press card. Do you have a statement for the paper? Yes, madame. Stay away from the crime scene and let the police do their job. And always leave a light on when you go out at night. I really need to get in... Tut tut! He is not to be disturbed. He is applying his famous scientific methods. Any moment now, the case will be cracked. I certainly hope so. I am dog tired and want to go home. This was madness. Sergeant Mu wasn't going to let me in. Why are you so tired, Sergeant Mu? I have been working for three days with no rest. Nave is a genius in his field, and he assumes that we all have his energy and vigor. Oh, you poor man. If you'd like to go and get some sleep, I will watch the door for you. That's very thoughtful of you. Ha! A cunning attempt to make me a deserter, madame. A gendarme never leaves his post. Well, how about a hot drink? Ah, that would do the trick for sure. Unfortunately, I mustn't drink on duty. My doctor specifically warned me against it after the last... Uh, incident. That incident you mentioned, what happened exactly? I don't want to talk about it. All I can say is, it was very... unfortunate. I am on duty, and I need to focus. Thanks a lot, Sergeant Moon.
Hi, George. I'm outside the gallery. Thank God you're safe, Nico. I tried to phone, but I couldn't get an answer. Inspector Moo is out here, and he's not letting me in. I managed to grab a couple of photos, but the guy got away. Poor Henri is dead. I know. Why kill him? I've been trying to find out. Turns out the alarm was tampered with. It looks to me like an inside job. So, no ordinary robbery? And no ordinary painting. The priest claims that La Maledizio is evil. I need to get into the office and see what the CCTV has to offer. Maybe you could help me out when you get back in here? Madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Whatever it is you want, we are closed. Then why are you standing here? You would not understand, madame. Try me. Because I look at you, and I know you are like all the others. The others? The pretty women who shop, who gossip, who have their spa days, their almond croissant. <laughs> that bad, huh? <laughs> And the men with their grooming products and their shiny shoes and their skinny suits who come to my cafe and ask me for lattes, macchiatos, frappe. I see your point. Is this what we fought on the barricades for, madame? Ripped up the paving slabs, bled on the streets. Isn't it? No, madame, it is not. We fought for ideas, for philosophy, for freedom, equality. Fraternity. Vive la Révolution. And do you know what drove us on as we fought? What fueled the streets of Paris in that glorious spring? What made our hearts soar? Uh, cheap wine and free sex? No, madame, no! It was French Café Noir that inspired us. The simple demitasse. The black, sweet taste of freedom. So that's why you closed? Yes, madame. I serve only thinkers, philosophers, revolutionaries. And you, madame, with your polite top and your pointy ears, are none of those things. This is a cafe. Yes, to the right people. On any other day, I would have given this guy a straight one to the chin. But there was a chance he could help me get into the gallery. Monsieur. Life is fleeting, madame. The sands of time are running through your fingers. Well, that may be, but... We know not what we want, and yet we are responsible for what we are. There's been a crime. That is terrible. No, but I think you're going to tell me. Life begins on the other side of despair. C'est vrai, no? Well, I guess so. He was pushing me to the point of despair. During the riots, we battled the forces of oppression. Oh, really? That must have been terrifying. It was. Except that they made me stay behind the barricades with the other baristas. We made coffee by the litre to fuel the resistance. I've never brewed so much coffee. Of course, our brave heroes spent half their time going for a pee. But with our coffee inside them, they fought the running dogs all night long. None of this was helping me get past Sajan Mou. Au revoir. Here's my press card. La liberté. Madame. You are not the person that I took you to be. You must accept my deepest, my most profound apologies. Well, of course I accept. But why? La liberté! At the height of the battle, as the tear gas blew and the blood flowed, it was la liberté which carried the voice of our realm. I know now that you are not the kind of woman who would ask. You are a true daughter of France, and I am your... 
Monsieur. The road to enlightenment is a long... Could we have a... Any... How about some coffee? For you, madame? Of course. There is only one coffee that I can serve you. Black, strong, and in a tiny cup. One moment. Here is your coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. The coffee was hot and strong. Could you make me a coffee to go? For a fellow revel... One moment. Here's your takeaway coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. Sergeant Mou, I brought you a coffee. Coffee? Fantastic! Just what I need. But wait. I must not. My little p p p problem. I'm sure one little cup of coffee won't hurt. I am tempted, madame, but I cannot risk it. I am sorry. So, this incident, it involved you, some coffee, and your... little problem? It is a tale of woe, madame. I'm all ears, Sergeant. Well, since you seem... Co Please do. I was in charge of canine security for the President himself. Uh, one day, on vacances, he went for a... Uh, I stayed alone with his dog, but I had drunk a coffee to stay awake. And nature... So I tied the dog to a... When I came back... Liaison dangereux. But how did they find... Well, two months later, the President's Labrador gave birth to six, and I was busted to sergeant. Just after... You are a victim of a... You think so? But of course, you knew you might... Well... Ah, it was the same thing. Yes, I suppose. And by drinking that coffee, you made the ultimate sacrifice for our glorious republic. Mm. Now you put it like that? And now France is calling you again. She is saying, drink, Sergeant Mou, drink! She is? She is. Drink? I suppose. Bravo! Oh dear, oh dear, excuse me, madame, I must use the petit gendarme's room. It has gone straight through me. Could you watch the gallery door for me? Oh, you can count on me, sergeant. I distracted Mu. It was now or never. How did you get past Sergeant Mu? Huh. Well, you won't fool me so easily, madame. I shall question you later. Nico, am I glad to see you. So, what's the problem? The inspector's watching me like a hawk. I'll never get in without some sort of distraction. I'll see what I can do. Inspector Nave, do you have a moment? My time is of the essence. Be quick now.
Could you give me a statement, Inspector? Now is not the time, Madame. I suppose this is quite a complex case, Inspector. It is a robbery gone bad. Nothing more, nothing less. Surely there's a bit more to it than that. Please abstain from baseless conjecture, Madame. The victim's body paints a simple picture, more reliable than any witness statement. Consider the impact of the bullet, and note the concomitant lack of blood. A casual homicide. Nothing more. Did you see the alarm was sabotaged? I have interrogated the crime scene, madame. I am fully aware of the disabled security. I prefer biological evidence to the merely circumstantial. Body parts, blood, important things. Don't you think the disabled alarm is highly suspicious, though? The forensic team will be along shortly. Voice your concerns to them. Do not bother me with this circumstantial fliff-fluff. Don't you find it odd that the thief chose that one particular painting? Life is full of odd things, madame. Fingerless gloves, white dog poo-poo, nasal hair. I prefer to concern myself with murder. Why don't you check out the security camera footage? Madame, that is not my area of expertise. It is the body which concerns me. But the CCTV footage is evidence. It could help identify the killer. Correction, madame. It is but an indicator. The only true evidence is bodily fluid. Unless you know something I don't, then please leave me be. The only evidence Inspector Nave seemed to appreciate involved gore. What do you think about the American, Georges? He is deeply suspicious. Thanks, Inspector. If I was going to distract Nave, I needed to unearth new evidence or concoct some. And the bloodier, the better. The tomato sauce had splattered on the floor. No way was I going to clean that up with my bare hands. I spread some of this sauce around with my shoe. It looked a little bit like a blood stain, but it still wasn't right. If I was going to distract the cop, I had to get rid of that gun. I scraped up the chewing gum with my press card hoping the inspector wouldn't notice. Inspector! Yes? Have you seen the stain on the floor over there? It looks like blood. Indeed. How very curious. I must investigate immediately, before one of these idiots steps in it. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe it is time to employ the machine. Okay, George. Nice work, Nico. I was sure the inspector hadn't seen me slip away, but I needed to be quick because it wouldn't take him long. The CCTV system was ancient. It took individual shots and recorded them to tape. It looked like I needed to enter a passcode to view the recording. Hmm, I needed to find a four digit number. Thank you. 
Henri's notice board was covered with all kinds of... And there I was, thinking that Henri might have set such an obvious code. No such luck. Hmm. I needed to find a four-digit number. The calendar looked like a child. Henri had ringed 27th May and scrawled birthday. Poor guy hadn't quite made it to his big day. The telephone was an antique rotary model. The handset looked greasy. I didn't like the idea of a... I didn't need a business card. The pen could have been useful. Then again... I didn't want to carry the... Ta the switch... I didn't feel the need... Carrying an ink pot around and the ink would have stained my hands for days. It was the paper that Nico wrote for. Nico lived for the day her. There was nothing else in the drawer. The folder looked interesting. This was very definitely tampering with evidence. It was a completion of work notice from a company called. They weren't the guys we'd read. Henri had gone behind our backs to choose a different security outfit. Huh. I'd never heard of Vera Security. The completion note from Vera Security. There was an address. Hello, Vera Security. George Stobart here, Paris Mutual. Never heard of you. Really? Well, I'm surprised. Uh, we're leaders in our field in commercial insurance, and our brand recognition is... Do me a favor. Don't call back. The lady hung up. I was going to have to visit in person. Henri had a model of a VW camper van painted in hippie colors. The engine capacity was displayed on the back, 1600 cc. It didn't look like there was any... It was a hookah pipe. Henri sure liked this clutter. It looked like Henri had saved the best booze for the back room. This stuff was way better than the junk Henri was serving. The sofa had clearly taken some punishment over the years. The frame containing pressed flowers. Henri sure had his corks. Henri hadn't set the model van's engine size as the passcode. Bingo. I rewound the tape to before the robbery. This was the first interesting frame. It was Henri studying La Maledixia. He couldn't have had any idea what was about to happen. Nico and I were taking a look at La Maledixia just before the robbery. Funny, the painting didn't strike me as remarkable at the time. Just odd. That shot, that was the earliest shot with anything interesting on it. A good view of La Maledixio. I could kind of see why Father Simeon thought it was evil. There was a certain...
the killer caught in the act. There was nothing really distinctive about him. The moment it all went horribly wrong. The killer making his getaway. A logo on the front of his helmet read Waterloo Motors. That could be useful. The alarm should have sounded, but it had been sabotaged. I wondered who could have done that. Maybe Lane or even Henri himself. Or perhaps even Vera Security, who'd installed the system. The painting was gone. There I was, taking a look at the alarm box. I hadn't thought about that when I was taking a look at the camera. That was the last shot. I'd got some leads on the killer's identity. A closer look at the painting might be useful. Whoever was wearing that helmet was going to pay for what... Poor Henri. The image was a little fuzzy, but in the center of the painting was what looked like a snake eating its own tail. I thought about what the priest said. There was definitely something unsettling about the picture. Why hadn't Henri backed down when the thief pulled the gun? If that was me, I'd have done whatever the guy wanted. The next shot had a better view of the riding of his helmet. The alarm should have... This frame caught the moment the killer took the painting. The most striking aspect of the painting was a snake eating its own tail. The CCTV had caught the killer in the act. He knew exactly which painting to take. The most striking... Was Henri studying that picture, or did he look worried? There was definitely more to this robbery than I first thought. That was the earliest... It seemed that whenever Nico stepped... There I was, look... Poor Henri. Whoever was wearing... That was the last. I'd probably. I knew it'd be wrong to leave the room without checking it thoroughly. It was a pretty. The statue was jaunty, up close and personal. I could see that the fig leaf was hinged. Thankfully, there was no one around to see me do this. Very interesting. I didn't want to go back into the gallery just yet. I'm it was a statue of Henri. A strategically placed fig leaf protected his modesty. I had no reason. This stuff was war. A naked lady stared at me seductively. The trinkets, the junk, the instruments. Henri was kind of a hippie at heart. The street was quiet. The phone was... It didn't look like there was anything... In the trash can, I found a crumpled letter from Henri's credit card company, demanding immediate payment. It listed extravagant purchases from a variety of ladies' fashion stores.
The address indicated that Henri lived in the chic and expensive 16th arrondissement of Paris. I decided to put the letter back. Henri's financial problems weren't my business. But now I knew where he lived. Monsieur, sir, you have snuck in here, and now you are tampering with my evidence. I'm just looking for the name of the caterer. That cheese was to die for. Ah, to die for? Ah, uh, to kill for. I put it to you, monsieur. Monsieur... Stobart. George Stobart. I put it to you that you came here in search of cheese and killed the owner in a fromage-induced frenzy. Well, no. I'm from Paris Mutual. We insured the exhibition. Oh, really? Yes, really. Mm. Ta Truth will out, Inspector. Who dares wins, Monsieur Stobart? He who laughs last laughs loudest, Inspector Nave. The guy was seriously nuts. May I remind you, monsieur, that a serious crime has been committed. I am going to have to ask you to return to the gallery. Of course, but I do need to ask you a few questions. D'accord, but remember, anything you say can be used against you, monsieur Stobart. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. Do you know anything about a company called Vera Security? No, I have never heard of them. Now... It's very likely that the security camera holds a clue to the killer's identity. Monsieur, I am a professional, and... Monsieur... Yeah, California born and bred. Of course. I think perhaps... Rolling around on top of fast cars with beautiful ladies... Interesting idea, and Indeed. Well, let me tell you something, Miss. You may go now. I had some valuable leads. But before following up on them, I had important business to attend to. Hey, Nico. You want to grab a quick cup of coffee? Sure. I am pleased to announce that I have finished my preliminary investigation. This is now an official crime scene, and you must all go. I shall be questioning all of you again in the coming days. Nobody is to leave the country, particularly you, Monsieur Stobart. Monsieur Lane will stay behind to help secure the premises. Mo? Yes, Inspector. Let them out. Right away, sir. Two coffees, please. Nice work in there, Nico. Whatever you did, it worked. I just made a tiny distraction, and Nave bought it. I think Nave would buy anything if it had blood on it. You know, this whole setup, the theft, the murder, it just doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Like I said, I think it was an inside job. Go on. Someone disabled the alarm, but on just one painting. Let me guess. La Maledicción. Exactly. And I aim to find out who did it. The CCTV picked up an image of the thief. His helmet had the words Waterloo Motors written across it. Interesting. I think I got a couple of good shots of him too. But I need to take a better look at them at home. Great. Let me know what you find. Well, the priest thinks La Maledicción is evil. Charles, she's just crazy. Yeah, you're probably right. But there's something strange going on. I found the address of the security company Henri employed. 
It was not the one that I recommended. Good luck with your investigations. Well, I guess I should go. This story won't write itself. And Josh? Yeah? It's good to see you again. Great to see you too, Nico. I watched her walk away. The sound of traffic, the sun shining, a crime to solve, and Nico back in my life.